Okay, so we're talking about uh, DSX today, and what DSX is is a skin for the um, D1 app. Um, so most of us, I think, will. Uh, fairly familiar with how skins work, but I guess there could be people watching this that um, are new to um, decent espresso to the machine. Um, so I'll just uh, quickly go through what a skin is and how it works. Um, when, um, when you get your machine, it comes with a tablet and the tablet runs an app. Um, and that app um, will look like um, what, what you're seeing on the screen here. I'll, just change that skin um, across to I'll go this way as quicker. So when you get your app, it's going to start, and it's likely to start on the Insight skin, which is this one here. Um, and what John has enabled us to do is create skins. So the, the code on um, the app is uh, open source code, which means you can write your own skin. Um, and that's what I've done. Um, it's, uh, it's, um, uh, I'm not sure what I was going to say there, but anyway. But, so what you do when, um, to change a skin is you go into the settings here, into the app tab. Um, and then you've got a, a button here to, to lay the list of skins. So these are the various skins that come with it. Um, DSX doesn't come with your app as standard. Um, so to get DSX, you need to download it from um, my website. Um, and you can find that once you get a machine, you'll, um, you'll get access to the Spora and you'll be able to find a link to that website. But, um, so when you download the app, you need to get it onto your tablet. Um, and that can be uh, tricky, particularly if you're not uh, familiar with Android, um, and particularly for uh, Apple users. So I believe with Windows, um, you can plug your tablet into your computer via USB cable, and you don't need any additional apps to transfer files. Um, if you're an app, uh, a Mac user, um, you'll need to um, use a, a program called Android File Transfer. Um, there's also links in Dysphora for that. Um, and actually, I might just, uh, just give you a quick demo of that. Um, so I'll just put another camera on here. I'll just turn that around for a minute. So I've, I've just got a tablet. Here hooked up just uh, an Android tablet, and I've got a uh, USB lead connected up to my computer uh, to a USB port. Um, and when I plug that in, it starts a program um, called Android File Transfer, um, which is a, this program you can see on the screen there now. Uh, Damien, we can't really see your screen. Oh, you can't see it? Okay. If you move your camera up just a little bit, oh, that works better. It's going to pop up this window here, and that'll list the files in your Android. So on my tablet, um, because I'm running a, uh, I think it's Android 8 I'm running on this particular tablet, um, it blocks file transfer, so I need to activate that. Um, so I've done that now, and then I'll where pop that screen up. So now you get um, a file directory that you're familiar with um, within the other operating system. Um, and then what you can do is when you download um, DSX, it'll come as a zip file. Um, on Mac, you won't need to unzip it, but on other operating systems, you may need to unzip it. So you would open that with your, um, with your file uh, viewer or explorer or whatever and you can just copy that across now it needs to go in a particular folder um, so on your tablet you're going to have um, all these files that look like this the directory structure looks like this um, one of those files is going to be called uh, one of the folders is going to be called de one plus this one here um, and that's where you, um, all the program files are for, 
for the D1 app I kept in, within that folder. Um, and if you scroll down, um, it's giving me a message that's not working, so I'm going to have to uh, reload it. Okay, so if you scroll down, you're looking for a folder called um, skins, this one here. Um, and you can expand that and you can see within that folder you're going to have a list of uh, folders which are the title for the skins and that, that's the folder you need to um, add DSX. So DSX will come um, as one folder with subfolders um, and files within those folders. So you basically just grab the folder and drop it in. Um, like that, I won't drop it in because it's already there. So, that's how you uh, transfer the files across using a USB cable. Um, I don't actually use that method. Just something to be aware of with um, with this app, Android file transfer app. Sometimes it uh, will corrupt files when it's transfer. Sometimes it misses files when they do transfers. Um, and a few people have transferred, gone and started up the skin uh, or laid a DSX in the skin and then restart the app. Um, and it's crashed on them. Um, and by deleting the folder and, and transferring it again, it's fixed it. So it's obvious that they've um, had some corruption in the file during the transfer. Um, the way I do it is I use a program called SyncThing. Um, there are other ways to do it as well. It's a wireless transfer method. Um, and it works out my local network. Um, so for me, I have SyncThing set up and I have it, a folder here on my computer, which is, um, uh, well, I've got quite a few installs, but um, I have this folder here that I work um, as my project folder. So I work on files which don't go directly to my tablet. Um, but then when I want to transfer something to my tablet, um, I just drop them into um, this folder that's uh, synced with my tablet and that transfers straight across ready to go. Um, so that's a, a good method. It's a little bit of mucking around setting up something and we can get into that later, but it's uh, very quick for uh, doing updates or transferring or um, and I actually sync um, the app so this app we've got running in the background um, syncs with my tablet um, so that uh, all my history files and so forth are um, viewable on the app immediately so if I've got a shot now I can look at that in the history and, um, and sit down on my computer and look at it rather than the tablet so anyway that's how we get the um, the skin on there to start with. And the same applies for profiles. You might get a profile you download from um, from somebody else um, and you will transfer that the same way. So you want to go into your um, file transfer into the folder. Instead of going into skins, you want to go into profiles here and you'll just dump it in, in that folder. So I think we've, we've covered that. Um, so we'll get back in into the skin and what that's about. So um, if I go back to here, when, when you start your app up, um, you're going to start up on the, on the home page or the, the off page. In this case, it's um, the espresso page. Um, so you go into the settings, which is this button here, uh, into the app tab, um, and then into skins, and you'll select the skin. And what we're looking for, we can ignore that one. There's nothing. So we're looking for DSX. Um, when you select the skin, it's going to ask you to um, exit the app and restart it. So the app will close down um, and you would tap the icon on your desktop to restart it. And you'll, if you've loaded uh, DSX, this is what you'll see. So let's get in and explain what DSX is all about. Um, it's a little bit more than the skin. The skin is um, technically just the, to lay out the look how things look. Um, but I've got quite a bit of functionality within this that's uh, not standard with um, the Insight skin or that come with the app. Um, so first of all, the way this works, I've got one page as a home page. So um, with the Insight skin, you've got um, different pages for the different functions. Um, those four tabs that would be at the top where you've got your, um, your Steam, your Espresso, um, your hot water, or pour, whatever it's called. Um, that's what these buttons are here. They're basically those tabs and they just start automatically. So 
Um, instead of switching pages, we just start on this one page. Um, and if I want to run a hot water, I would um, uh, tap that icon there. If you're using a uh, version 1.4 machine or newer, um, you can't start from a, a function from the tablet. So you would start that on your group head controller, um, but it, it would operate the same way. So when you start that function, it's going to change and you're going to get this red outside ring. Um, and it's going to tell you what's happening and you're going to have a red hand indicating that you can tap here um, or you can use your group head controller to stop that process. So um, that's basically the home page. Um, what we've got here is uh, what I call DSX backend or, or admin section. So we've got, I've got two settings buttons. Um, this set, setting button here goes to the settings that you can see when you, um, we're using a different skin. Um, so it's exactly the same in there. Um, this button here goes to DSX settings. And DSX settings has quite a few pages. Um, and the way to scroll through those pages is use these arrow keys. You can arrow forward or backwards with those keys. And then to exit out of the admin section, you'll use the home button to return home back to here. So if I go in there again, we can scroll through and you can see there's lots and lots of pages. So we'll um, endeavor to get through what uh, and describe what they're all about. So one of the first features that come to DSX, um, where DSX come about was um, D stands for Damien, for myself, uh, S for skin, and X is because I started doing um, uh, version one, version two, version three, up to version four, and then um, I was keeping this, the versions going and, and maintaining the, the separate versions, and I decided that um, I wanted to reduce my workload and just have one skin, so I just call it X, um, just marks a spot, so to speak. Um, so now we just have DSX, and that's where the name come from. But, um, so one of the functions, and I think John was uh, is looking at um, introducing something similar with uh, Insight soon, and this is something that we use daily. Um, I have these cups here, and I call them favourites. So what a favourite is is uh, you tap that cup, and it sets up. Uh, all your settings, not just the profile, but your entire machine settings to what you've saved for that favorite. So for instance here, we start on the left hand side. This is our preparation side. So we start at the top, we look, we've got the grip um, temperature, our steam temperature and the tank volume. So just a little bit of information about um, our machine. Uh, here's our setup, what's gonna happen um, with our profile. So our profile name, we've got um, the beam weight so we can record our dose. Um, we can record our, uh, we've got our information here about where our, sh our shot's gonna stop. So it's gonna be a, a one to 3.1, and it's gonna stop at 50 gra uh, five grams. Um, so just on that, DSX is very much orientated to uh, using a scale. Um, It'll work without a scale, um, but it's uh, it's built around a scale because that's what I use. Um, so a lot of the functions are you know, related to the weight. Um, so it, it can stop on volume though. So if we go into a profile, which we'll, we'll have a look at it in a minute, you've got um, um, a, 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 what they call stop at volume. Um, and because this is an advanced profile, um, the brigade's advanced here. If it was a pressure profile, they would um, it'd state pressure there. So it tells you what profile type it is. Um, but in an advanced profile, we can stop it at, at a chosen step. So it's showing that information and it's showing the setting we've got there. So if I was using a different, if I load a different paper, you can see here I've got the um, stop of water, uh, stop the volume turned off for that. So for that. So that goes, when I select those cups, it resets all this to the relevant information. Um, it sets a flush time. Um, so with DSX, we've got a uh, flush timer. Um, and I can show you how to, to set that in a minute. Um, so now if I start the flush, um, you can see the time is counting down and it gets to the end of the time and uh, turns off. Um, the time has actually got an extension to the timer too. You can see here there's three seconds showing there. 
So if I tap that now while it's counting down, that adds that three seconds across to here and extends the timer. So um, you might use three seconds for normal shots, but you might want to have an extension for some reason for the end of the, for the, end of the day or something like that. So anyway, that's what that feature is. Um, our next bit of information here is um, steam. Um, so our steam time, uh, in this case, is set to 39 seconds. That will save with the uh, favourites as well. However, for my use, um, I weigh my steam. So I put my, um, um, my jug with milk in it on the scale um, and I tap this icon here and that sets the time so they get the exact same temperature uh, regardless of what weight I've got in my jug. Um, and I'll, I'll go into more detail regarding that shortly. Um, and then the final line of information here we've got is uh, the water settings. So um, with hot water pour, um, if you've got some settings you can set for that. You can set the volume you want to come out and uh, the temperature of that water. Um, so basically this section here tells you, uh, gives you a glance at what's going to happen um, with all your functions. Um, we've got this icon here which is um, an image or an icon of the milk jug um, and what I've done is um, when I refer to setting the weight by tapping this icon here uh, where I weigh my milk jug with milk in it and I tap this here and it uh, sets the time um, there is an option to set three jug sizes um, um, so by tapping that icon I can scroll through the different jugs so if I was going to steam with the small jug um, it would set the, uh, the weight we've calibrated for that jug and so forth so um, that's what that is. Now, you'll notice uh, uh, here this is all blue. So that text is blue and these asterisks are blue. And that indicates that all those settings are set according to what I've saved as my favourite. So if I was to go and change one of those settings now, um, say I go into this page and I uh, just change the steam time, and we'll go back, you can see that asterisk has gone white. Um, so if the asterisk goes white, it means you've changed the setting that's different to the, uh, what you've saved as favourite. Um, and that way you can, can glance at that and go, okay, that's different. Is that supposed to be different or is it meant to be um, the, the default that you saved? Um, and if you tap the, the blue cup again, it'll set those uh, all blue again. And there's also that indicator here. So that dot there um, will go away if one of those settings aren't um, what's going to say to the favourite. Okay, so you've got three favourites here. You can just set them and you can see they change colour. Um, let's go into some of the setup. Um, we'll have a look at uh, steaming first. So if we go into um, the back end, into the admin section, the first page that comes up is the workflow setup page. Um, and this page is where um, you're going to set everything I described here, basically. Um, and you can get there by tapping this section here too. So you can tap there and you go to the same page. Um, so we can set a beam weight. Um, and you can see I've got that set to 18 grams. Um, if I was to go up to 20 grams, it will show a different extraction ratio here. So some people like to extract to a certain extraction ratio. And you can just watch that while you change the setting and, um, and set it that way. Um, this is the uh, extraction, uh, the stop at weight, sorry. So um, that's where it's working at the uh, extraction yield from the extraction ratio, sorry, from there. Um, we've got this section in the middle, which is going to tell us what's going to happen between our dose and extraction as far as um, moving on at weight function, which uh, it's a new feature and uh, we'll, we'll leave that for a little bit later. Um, the next section, so this is your espresso section, the settings for the espresso. Um, this is settings for steam. So here we can change steam time manually. So if you're not weighing um, steam and you want to change the time, you would change it here. Um, and here you can select a, a different jug, which one you use, um, which you can do on the, on the home page anyway. Um, the reason I've got it duplicated here is because this is where you would save your favourites. So these cups here, if I tap one of these now, whatever settings I've got here, 
from the safety of the favourite. So rather than go to the home page and select the jug, I can view it here and I can select and change it here. So. Um, this section here is for flush. So we've got um, initial flush time here and then you've got that extended time where I was showing you um, when I tap that button for the second time while it was running, um, that'll extend the time by whatever setting you've got there. Um, and then this bottom section is the hot water section. So here's where we set the volume we want um, and the temperature. Um, this uh, also has a, a stop and wait feature for hot water. So I've got it turned off. If I turn that on, um, it, it's giving me a warning here. Um, I've got it set to stop at 20 grams of water, but because my volume is set to 10 mil, it's um, asking me to check my my volume setting, um, because what's going to happen is um, the machine's going to stop whichever event comes first. So if it reaches 10 mil first, or reaches 20 grams first, it's, whichever it's, it's going to stop. And because I don't want it to stop at, um, at the volume, I need to increase that, um, and that message is going to wait now. So now it'll stop um, at, at weight. Um, and this here is an offset for that weight. So if you find, um, um, you're ending up with more weight in the cup than what you, um, you've got here for setting. You can set an offset, which basically tells the, um, um, the app to stop or tells the machine to stop uh, a little bit early so that um, when, when it actually gets around to stopping, the last water comes out, um, it'll be an accurate, an accurate weight. So now if I go to the home page, we've got an extra line now, which is the water stop at weight setting, and it's telling us that's turned on at 20 gram. Um, if I turn that off by scrolling all the way down, um, that line disappears. Okay, so that's our setup page. Now, if I want to set up a, um, a new favourite, so let's go into uh, what I did there was I just clicked here to go directly to the profile list. Um, so I, I go in there. Um, and so I want to select the profile and just say, um, let's, let's just select the default profile. Um, now, let's say I'm using, uh, my, my, my normal weight for this would be, um, say 18 grams. So I said 18 grams. Now, um, I, I weigh my beans and that'll change for each shot, but I, I generally aim for that target. Um, you can go to the profile page from here as well. You can tap the profile name. Default is the profile name. Um, I'm going to do a, say, a two to one shot. So I've got 36 grams coming out. And it's telling me my extraction ratio there. Um, I'm, I'm going to make a, a latte out of it. I want to steam, say, 200 grams of milk. Um, and I know just from my experience, that's going to be um, about 39 seconds, 38 seconds. Um, so I can set that as my default, but that will change when I lay my milk anyway. But if I wasn't using the scale, this is where I would set it. Um, and I would just be accurate in, in measuring out uh, the volume of milk that I was putting in my jug and then it would stand to the same temperature. Um, my flush time, I don't want to just use three seconds. I find that's fine for me, so I have that set. Um, like that all the time. Um, and I don't use hot water. Obviously, don't use hot water for a milk drink, so um, there's, there's no point in changing that. So if I save that now to my orange cup, I tap this cup here, and it's told me, puts a message up there saying it's saved. And if I go to the home page and I, uh, select a different profile, now I tap that cup and it's loaded all those settings I set. Okay, so that's uh, favourites. Um, the next um, section of the home page is we've got, we've got this section here, which is uh, basically just the control. Um, there's a lot of information we'll tell you in the middle. So if your machine's still heating up, it'll tell you to wait. Um, it'll tell you if you put on a shot, it'll tell you the step, the profile step uh, that's currently been uh, executed. Um, if, for instance, you're pouring steam, it'll tell you pouring steam. If that stops by timer, um, it'll tell you to tap uh, purge and so forth. So it's just a lot of information there. We'll have the countdown timers if they're relevant up here. 
um, and then it will change colour um, according to whether it's uh, in standby or in operation. This icon down here, this large icon down here is the scale. Um, so you can tap the scale here and it'll tear. Um, and also if the scale is disconnected, it will um, uh, flash here disconnected. Um, it'll flash the word disconnected. Uh, and if it's disconnected, um, so long as your scale is on and transmitting, of course, um, you can tap the scale and it'll reconnect for you. Um, so I've just, I've just got some uh, dummy buttons that you can't see, so I've just teared that for uh, illustration purposes. Um, if I was to uh, weigh, say, 18 grams, weigh um, my beans, I, I put my cup on here, my niche cup, um, and weigh out 18 grams of beans, um, and then I will tap this icon here, and what that does is uh, transfer that weight um, to my bean setting. So to demonstrate that, I'll just change that um, bean setting to something else. So I've got 11 grams there, and now when I tap this icon here, it uh, transfers that amount. So my workflow starts out by putting my um, bean cup on the scale, um, tearing the scale, and then weighing out my, my dose, 18 grams, um, and tapping that button, and that sets that. Um, I then weigh my milk, and I do the same thing. So I make sure I've got the jug size correct, um, and I mainly use the medium jug. So I weigh out the, the milk, um, and what we're seeing here is a, a gross weight. Um, and here we're seeing a net weight. So what I'm doing is tearing the scale first, so it's zero, putting my um, milk in the jug and then putting my jug on the scale here. Um, and it will give the net weight up here. So now if I, uh, if I tap this side of the icon, it will calculate the steam time for that volume of milk. So I've got 214 grams um, within the cup, so I'll tap that and it'll set this steam time. So set it to 38 seconds. Now, if I put, you can see here, if I've got more, it's uh, set it to 52 seconds. Um, so now when that steams, um, it'll steam to the same temperature each time. Um, and I'll just go into uh, how to set that up. So if we go into uh, the, the admin section again, and we scroll through, um, we've got Uh, steam by weight setup page. Um, this is a one-time setup, so it sets up um, the, the weight for our jugs and our calibration for that function to work, for the steam by time function to work. Um, and it also sets up a net weight for your bean cup, which I'll, I'll go back and explain that in a, sec in a second. Um, so to set this up, you've got a cross here. We can hit that cross and it'll turn it off. We'll basically just wipe the information you've got set for that, um, for that jug, or the weight you've got set for that jug. Um, and if that's off, um, it won't show up when you scroll through those jugs. Um, it'll just scroll through the two that you've got set. Um, or it'll, you've only got one set, it uh, won't scroll at all. Um, to set a weight there, we put a weight on our scale. Um, and that way our jug empty, uh, and then we just tap here, and it transfers that weight to the jug. So now we've set a uh, dry weight for our small jug, and we'll do the same for our medium and, then, and for our large jug. Um, so once we've uh, set up the weight for the jug, what we want to do is put some milk in, um, and you want to weigh that milk first um, before you steam because the steam will have a little bit of weight, so you weigh. That, um, how much milk you've got in there um, and put that figure in here. Um, then steam it um, using your thermometer and steam it to the temperature that uh, you like. Um, and then take note of how long it took to steam it. Um, in my case, to steam um, to 94 degrees C, uh, 228 grams, um, it takes 41 seconds. So I put that time in there and now we're calibrated. With, you never have to change that again, unless of course you change your steam power settings or something like that, then the steam rate um, changes, then you would uh, recalibrate. 
Um, or if you, you find that uh, you decide you want your milk a little bit cooler, you can just knock a couple of seconds off. Um, that's a quick way just to adjust it. And, okay, so this here is also a net weight for the uh, for um, my boon joke. So my, my little niche cup that I use, which is um, one of these that comes with a niche. Um, I just sit that on my scarf and then tip some beans in with my little scoop. Um, what we've got here, you can see this is there's an on um, button there. So if I go back here, I'll try and increase that to where it shows a value. So you can see here now, um, that's showing 14.8 grams here. And what that is, is um, it's taking into consideration the net weight of that jug, uh, not the jug, the, um, the bean container. Um, and it's recognising um, there's somewhere between, I can't remember what settings I've got now, I think somewhere between 10 grams and uh, 24 grams. Um, it's it's recognising there's a difference to that and it's saying, okay, well, there must be um, beans in that cup. So it's, it's setting this value here. So now what happens is if I tap this bean icon here, um, it sets that base up in my beans. So there's two ways to weigh your beans out and add them to the uh, to register them as the, as the bean weight. And that is um, first to tear the scale um, with the cup on it. So it tears, um, and then when you weigh your beans, um, you get the actual weight without the cup. Um, and the other way is to set a, a net weight in the settings section here. So I've got, uh, my cup weighs uh, 123.2 grams. Um, and the advantage of that is um, normally I would put my cup on tear and then scoop my beans in and weigh them. But um, if I could then go take my cup off and I go do something else, um, I, ca I can't then tear the scale again with the empty cup because I've got beans in it. So I can now sit that cup with the beans on, or tear the scale first, sit that cup with the beans on, and we'll put that 80 grams up here, and I can um, use that button. So it just gives you a couple of options there. Okay, so now we go to the right-hand side. Um, we've got a, a clock here, you can turn it off and on um, within the settings. Um, and I'll, I'll go to that in a minute. You can also set your own uh, heading up here, you can call that whatever you like, um, change, change the colour, etc. Um, so this side we've got uh, information about what's happening while you're um, uh, pouring the shot or doing the steam. So you've got um, espresso graph here, um, and you've got a steam graph here. Um, to either of those graphs, you can tap on them and then tap back, and they'll enlarge the graphs. Um, so. Um, this X graph page is, is quite a bit different uh, layout than the um, other graphs you might see. Um, I've got all these buttons down the bottom here. Um, and basically what we can do is um, we've got zoom buttons. So on the side here, you've got a couple arrows which indicate that um, you can move that page up and down. You can see I'm moving that page up and down by tapping on uh, the left side of the graph. Um, and then we've got zoom, so we can zoom in. You can see that y axis um, is y axis getting smaller, so it's zooming in. Um, and we can zoom out, and we can just reset back by tapping reset. Um, so now the graph has got a lot of information. Oops, the graph's got a lot of information, and it looks quite noisy. Um, so I'm usually turning things off. I turn off. The, like the delta, I turn off the um, uh, resistance. Um, you can you can turn off all the all the uh, curves that shown on the graph. You can turn them all off. Um, so I just leave the ones on that I want to use. Um, so you can turn off the temperature, uh, turn off goals, steps. Um, so you can you can just make it a bit clearer to what which you want to look at. Um, if you want to look, uh, there's a special function for temperature. So I don't have a separate temperature graph. Um, so if I've got the temperature curve on, you can see here there's a, this button says zoom temperature. 
if I've got the temperature curve off, it just works as a reset button. Um, so when that's set the zoom temperature, if I click that, it's going to zoom in, um, give you a nice view of the temperature. It's going to center it and everything for you. So you don't have to move the page up and down or zoom in. Um, it's going to zoom straight in the temperature. And it's going to tell you that key is now 10 times. So um, that's 88 degrees uh, C. That's 99, uh, 92 degrees C. Um, and I can reset that graph, go back to the way it is. So it's, it's just a shortcut, quick way to zoom in. Okay, so we've got information here, which um, you can view this graph while you're uh, pouring the espresso. Um, and it's just got the information here. So this will um, obviously change, the duration will change, um, and the water volume will change, and the weight here will change um, in real time. Um, and a lot those buttons have got the same information on them as well, so um, the flow rate, etc. This information here has got uh, two steps, um, and that you'll be familiar with that with uh, with other skins as well. Um, you've got a pre-fusion step and a pause step, um, and same with the time. You've got pre-fusion time and the extraction time, and pour time, and then just the totals. So. So I think that's uh, pretty well covered the graph. You've got to start, you can start and stop the graph from here with this button over here. Um, it tells me here what profile we're running um, and, and today's date so, and time. So. Um, with the X, uh, this graph doesn't show um, the, the graphs that John creates for the profile, the um, preview type graph. Um, this graph, will keep the uh, last shot you make. So um, when, whatever shot was the last shot you made, it's always going to show on this graph. Even if you uh, close down the app and reload again, it's going to show that. And the same with the steam, it's um, just going to show the same steam graph that you did last time. So um, if you went into settings or something um, and you come back, it's not going to disappear, it's just going to be the same. Or if you change profile, it's not going to change, it's just going to keep that, that graph. Um, so that's a little bit different there. Okay, so let's get into how the skin looks. We've, we've covered pretty well the operation of the skin, I think. Um, uh, there's another setting on this page, there's a, a fast fill here. Um, I may end up taking that out. Um, if you select that, it's going to um, speed the pumps up. It, 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 it's only going to apply to um, LRV2 and LRV3, and it's just going to make the pumps run fast before the profile starts. So that uh, um, if we look at the graph here, um, you can see that the water starts at about um, it starts at about two here because out it flows on this side about two minutes per second. Um, what it aims to do is start from here, so. It's, the idea is to give an um, initial um, hammer of water to compact the puck a bit more. Um, I'm not really finding it makes a big difference, but anyway, that's what that is. Um, so if we have a look now at the, uh, the setup page, this is uh, the theme setup page. And this is where you set up how the skin's going to look. Um, you can, here you can change the heading, so you can call it um, whatever you want, your coffee. Um, and if you go to the home page, you can see that's changed. Um, you can change the colour of the heading. You can uh, tap this button here um, and select a different colour. So you can see it's changed colour. Um, you can select the font. Um, I know a lot of people don't like Comic Sans, but Anyway, there's plenty of fonts there. You can add your own font files. So I've got quite a few in there, but um, you can do so long as it's a TTF font file or a, I think it's a TTO, is it? I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, so long as it's the right font file. Um, and then you can just select that uh, font. I mean, it's OTF or TTF. Yeah, okay. Um, to change the background colour, I've given uh, five options here. Um, of course, you could change one of those images yourself if you wanted to. 
Um, I generally don't change any images in my uh, skin updates, only code files. Um, so if you wanted a different color or different uh, an image as a background, you can change one of those images um, within the file itself. Um, so you can select the black or different colors. Um, here you can select a different dial and you can set up that dial. So on the home page dial, that's uh, what it's going to look like. Now, we've got three options here. Um, you set up the diesel, which is the south side. So I can set it um, what I call clock, which has got the graduations. I can set it, um, this was the first one I made. Um, so I just call it my original. Um, I can set it as a, um, with that style, what I call grid. Um, I use the clock one myself. Um, icons, we can use uh, DSX icons. Those are the icons I made. Um, and I've also made a copy of um, the icons that uh, John made, uh, which looks similar to the, the group head icons. So you can use those icons instead if you prefer. Um, and the layout you can change as well. So um, the D13 layout is uh, the layout of that's on the group head controller. Um, so you've got your espresso on the front and the border behind and then uh, left to right. Um, and you can change that to a different layout if you prefer. Um, the next setting we've got is uh, the font. Uh, sorry, this is a zoom setting, it's not the font. Um, what we do here is we can set the uh, Y axis uh, for the zoom graph. So this is because I've changed some of those settings, it's going to ask me to quit. Um, with this graph here, this Y axis uh, is, is starting at, uh, from 0 to 12. Um, what I can do is if um, I want to start that at, say, uh, a longer or shorter y axis, um, what I would do is go in here and I could set that to something else. So now we're starting at 10. Um, you can see when I go into this graph, it now starts from 0 to 10. So you can set that um, to whatever default works best for yourself. Um, so I'll just, I'll just leave it at 12. But that's what it is. So as long as it starts anywhere from 6 to 15, you can, you can set that to. Um, these buttons here, um, if you're not using a scale, you can tick that uh, button there. Uh, and again, it's gonna ask me to quit. So now what that's done is put a little plus and minus here. Um, so I can now tap on the bottom or the top here um, and, and set weights that way. So if you don't have a scale and you still wanna use some of these features, um, or you can use a manual scale um, and weigh your milk, for instance, and then um, transfer it across, or you can put your bean weight in and transfer it across. Um, or, of course, you can just go in here and, and set them manually if you prefer. Um, that's what, what that um, button does in the settings here. Um, hide clock, so if you want to hide the clock from the home page, um, you can select that. Um, so the clock looks up in the corner. You can turn that off. Um, and original clock format. So the clock format, the original clock format is in uh, Comic Sans, and I'm not sure why, but some people have complained to me saying they, they detest that font. Um, so what I've done is made an option where I can, you can turn that off, um, and the clock will use the font, whatever font you select for your, um, your, your skin font. So that's, uh, that sets up the look of the skin. Um, just get, I'll just open up a, uh, a file browser again and go into the skin folder. So this is the DSX folder. Um, I'll just go into here because I don't want to mess up files in there with the files that I give to you guys. So in the DSX folder, um, you've, you've got all these folders. Um, when we do an update, 
mainly going to replace this folder here, the code files. Um, I'll advise um, if there's other files in there to change, um, but generally you just replace that there. Um, what we've got um, as of version 4.0, um, we've got a new folder called DSX Plugins. Um, and that's this folder here. So in this folder here, I've got all these files here, which are plugins. The ones that start with DSX, I'll come standard. Um, and there's no actual code in this. Well, there's a little bit of code in there, but most of the code for those files are actually in the main app, in the program file, so that when I update, um, they'll update when you update this folder. Um, however, what my plan is here is to enable people to create their own plugins. So a couple of examples I've given are um, this EY calculator and Pizza Dough. Um, and what they are, they're standalone uh, plugins. Uh, they don't have to be, they can have uh, control of the app or use data from the app. Um, in this case, the Pizza Dough um, EY was the extraction ratio. Um, I'll just move that out of the way. Um, for that plugin to work, you just dump your file straight in there. Um, and there's, um, That's good. So if, if I open that up in the text editor, um, there's only three lines of code that you need. Well, there's only actually one line of code you have to have, but um, we can go more into that if people are interested later. Um, so what that is, is when I add one of those plugins um, into that folder, um, it's good. this is a, a plugin in itself. Um, this plugin shows the list of plugins and, and you can activate them and deactivate them. Um, so this is a list of plugins um, that I can activate and deactivate. The ones you can't activate that are um, tied in with the DXX um, core code uh, won't show up in the list. Um, for instance, these are the two uh, plugins that I, I was just describing before. We've got the pizza dough and the extraction uh, calculator. So if I uh, tap on this plugin now, or one of these plugins, it just transfers it across to this side and makes it inactive. So you can see that it's telling you there that um, it's, it's been uh, deactivated. Um, so you can turn all your plugins off pretty quickly or, or turn them on if you want. So um, if the plugin um, has a line of code that says, um, describes uh, the page name, it adds it automatically to the DSX backend. So it adds your plugin page um, into this carousel of pages. So if I scroll through here, um, go through all these pages, and you can see here, um, this is our pizza dough calculator, and here's our extraction your calculator. Um, so both those plugins now, um, the background sets up for you, this button, um, all these buttons set up for you, um, and you can just make that code do what you want. So, this extraction your calculator, for instance, um, is standalone, it's just something you can use on the side um, to work out what your extraction yield is. You can put in um, your dose, uh, your shot weight, and your TDS. Uh, you can change that to uh, bricks if you prefer by tapping this button. Um, and this button here changes your. Uh, your steps um, by whole numbers or point one of the number. So you can just toggle between those two. So that's, that's that one. This is the pizza dough one. I use this quite regularly um, for making pizza dough. So I can just change my pizza quantity um, and I've got my ingredients here. And they're not related to uh, the machine, but you can make your own thing. You might be able to um, use it for notes or whatever, to have some weather thing that's endless what you can do. So. Anyway, that describes what the plugins is, and you can turn that off um, and add more. Turn them off there. Um, okay, so what this button is here is uh, with one of those plugins, you can. Um, I'll just go back to the home page. And describe what that's doing. So unfortunately a lot of uh, changes you make you need to restart the app because uh, the app needs to um, load new files. But, um, 
if I put my app into uh, sleep mode, so I've tapped that icon there, and it's uh, now going into the screensaver. So I've just got my own images here for screensaver. Um, what I've done here is uh, that page is divided in two sides. So on the left hand side, if we tap that to wake up um, uh, the, the tablet, um, what it's going to do is it's going to wake up the tablet, but it's not going to wake up the machine. And it's going to go straight to the page that you selected on that button that I was um, I pointed out a minute ago. So it's gone straight to the, um, the page don't calculator. Um, so if I scroll through that, back to that page, you can see that's the page I've got selected there. So if I tap this button, um, I can go straight to the home. Uh, well, it's turned off now, so the whole um, sleep page will wake the machine as normal. Um, it'll go to that plugin, that plugin. So you can just scroll through the plugins by tapping this button to where you want that page to start. Um, so I've got it set here to pizza. Um, if I go back to the home button, it uh, goes back to this um, screen saver screen. Now, by tapping this side, it doesn't actually wake the machine up. All it's doing is giving access to the app um, without warming the machine up. So in my case, um, I might want to make some pizza dough and I don't want to make a coffee. So I just tap on this side. I go in here, I've got straight to my pizza dough. Um, and I can change the settings and I've got my recipe. Um, and the same, uh, if I set that to the extraction yield, I might make my coffee or I might be doing some cupping and not using my espresso machine. Um, and I can use the extraction yield calculator here. Um, and then when I tap the home button, instead of going to the home, it just goes back to the screensaver. And if I tap this side, it wakes the machine up as normal. It goes to the home page, the machine will start heating up and you would use it as normal. So, just to go back to that, if that is off, the whole screen, uh, screen works as normal. If there's a um, plug-in showing there, the left side, we'll go to the plugins and run them up the machine. Okay, so that's our calibration page, we've done that. This is a new feature, I'll see if we can get to that at the end. Um, and our work, we've done the our workflow, so we've covered that. Our main settings page. Um, everything on this page is exactly the same as what you'll get when you go to the settings uh, button. So if you went to the settings button here, um, and you, you've got these two tabs to machine and, and the app tab. Um, under the machine tab, you've got all your settings that are uh, pertaining to um, change settings to the, with the machine. And this will change settings that are related to the app. Um, I've laid it out a little bit different and gave it a theme similar to DSX. Um, so I can get into into this page here. So I have basically one page instead of two tabs, um, but I have all these buttons here which go to separate pages. So um, you tap here, you've got the skin list. Um, We've got uh, language units and, and some options here, um, which are all going to be the same options except for um, this option here. You can use um, this main settings page. Um, if I selected this now, what that does is from the home page, it changes this button here. Instead of going to um, these settings pages, um, it'll go directly to um, to, that, to this page here. I generally have it off because I like to go to the other page at times, um, but I do use this frequently um, when I'm changing skin and settings. It just, it's laid out for my convenience and you don't really need it. Um, you might find it convenient or not, but anyway, that's, that's basically what it is. Um, one of the things I do use on this page though is when I do updates, uh, particularly app updates. So at the moment, um, it's showing that the app is up to date. Um, if there was an update there, I select this button down here, or select this uh, option down here, which back up, doesn't back up before I do the update. So what happens now is if I uh, do an update, it will update the entire D1 Plus folder. So not just um, DSX skin, but the whole app will be, update, uh, will be backed up. And 
it'll save that back up in the same uh, folder that the DE1 folder is kept on the tablet. Um, so what that enables you to do is, if something goes wrong with your app, um, you can just delete the DE1 folder and you can rename that backup uh, to DE1, uh, to DE1 plus, sorry, and everything will be back to exactly the way it was um, in that last state when you did the backup. Um, so you know, sometimes people might uh, um, find a crash or something and, and the app can't start and you can't get out of it. Um, if you've got that backup, it's, it's very simple to go back and you, you don't have to worry about losing the settings or any your, your data because it was all um, saved for that backup. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the only thing that will be different is, say, like your counters will be different if you've done, uh, if you've used it since that backup. Um, the firmware will just do the same firmware update that uh, will from clicking the, um, the button from the other settings page. Um, I've moved things around a little bit, so um, in the screen saver button, uh, on the screen saver page we've got um, like our sleep timer and our brightness for screen saver um, and our time interval um, all on this page. Um, I think they're separated from the other, um, plus your scheduler on this page. So anything to do with um, uh, sleep mode or screen saver mode is on that button. Um, and we've got the machine calibration thing, so this is just taken into those other pages. So you've got your, um, your two calibration pages there. Um, and that, they work exactly the same, it's just a different way of getting there. Um, and the same with those buttons, the de tra uh, transport and the clean the scale and stuff there. DSX isn't doing anything there, so uh, just a shortcut to those other pages. Um, from this page, you can um, search for your scale or for your machine. Everything's exactly the same. Um, what I've got here, though, is uh, instead of those being on separate pages, you can see what app version, um, and you've got the, the option here. Um, you can see your firmware version from, from this page. So anyway, I think we're going through that enough. You'll notice uh, on all the, uh, the, uh, the back-end pages, um, the DSX version will be down the bottom here, so um, if you have a problem with DSX, uh, it's, it's good to mention what version you've got because uh, that way I know if it's something that's uh, not already been fixed or not. Okay, so that's what that page is about. Um, when you're starting out, you can probably ignore that page. Um, okay, so I think we've gone through... This is the backup page. Um, what we can do here is force a backup rather than doing an update and automatically doing the backup. We can do a backup at any time. So basically I tap that button now, it's telling me to please wait. Um, and that's backing up uh, my entire folder. And uh, I don't know why it was so slow. But anyway, it's all done, so it's made a copy of it. Um, so I know my current state is backed up. Um, I've got a restore button here, so I probably uh, advise not using that at this stage. What, what it does is restore the DSX settings. Um, I originally set it up to restore the entire app. So we look for the backup and we did delete your current app and restore the, the backup. Um, and it worked quite well, but I had a problem on, uh, on my original 5.1 tablet and I lost um, some files which meant that uh, basically wrecked the app, I had to do a, f a fresh install. And I tried it many, many times, and although it only happened once, I just wasn't uh, confident to put it out there, so I stopped doing that. But, um, we may develop that more later. But, um, what I did then was change that to restore DSX settings. So um, basically, if you did a fresh app install, um, and you click this button, it'll go and restore your favorite settings, all the settings you've got set for these cups. Um, and all your settings you set in your, um, um, your theme set up and, and stuff like that. Um, so we'll restore all those for you. Um, I personally prefer just transferring the file, so I would go into my um, file explorer here and I, I grab um, just the folder for my backup. Um, so all my user settings are in this folder. There's six user set. 
Um, and that folder will never be updated with, an app, uh, with a skin update. Um, so there's no chance that uh, a skin update will, um, will override those folders. Unless, of course, you do a skin update uh, by updating the main folder here. So when you do the initial install, you would add the DSX folder. From then on, updates you'd only update the code folder or whatever folders are instructed to update. Otherwise, you may override those settings. And if you do, hopefully you've got that backup and you can just copy that uh, folder back and that will put all your settings back for you. Okay, so um, that's what the backup is. Um, let's go through those pages again to so make sure I've covered them all. So back up the store. Okay, so we've been around, we've covered the skin pretty well. The only thing we have question. Yeah. Amen. Can we look at the uh, main settings page again, the machine calibration? Me? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, is, I don't know if this is just a simulated view or not, but what, what the heck with four milliliters a second on the steam flow rate? Uh, I'm running this app on my Mac, so it's uh, simulated. Okay. It's not connected to my machine. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, thanks. So, look, um, John has dummy values in the app, um, so the app will check whether it's uh, an Android or whether it's some other operating system. And if it's some op other operating system, um, it puts in random numbers um, so that we can test. And that's why it's good. Um, the 4.0 mils per second flow rate <clears throat> is an R&D thing. Right now, the firmware maxes at 2.5 mils per second. And it's just because we have some, right, right now our heaters max at 10 amps, but I have some heaters coming that go all the way to 20 amps. So I just plan to be able to do that um, that flow rate higher. I mean, it might just blast a hole in your table, but we'll find out. Okay, thanks. I'd have to get stronger milk jugs and put holes in <laughs> Okay, so there's one more feature, which is uh, it's only a few weeks old. Um, so if we go back to that workflow page, we've got this section in the middle here. Um, what it is, is a move on by weight. Um, so I think first, I'd like to describe what a profile does. Um, and most, most of us will be familiar with profiles, but uh, if you've not used the machine before, um, or you're new to it, um, what we do is we create a profile, or the machine will come with uh, various profiles. Um, and you load that profile and it tells the machine um, how to extract the, the shot, how to, what to do with your espresso. Um, when we load a profile, um, say for instance, I'm going to go to Damien's LRB2. Um, if I go to the, the second tab here, um, that is where you, you set up all the settings for that profile. Um, you've got some preview here. Don't worry about that graph different ones will look like this. Um, so there's, there's three, types, uh, three types of profiles. There's three different wizards that John's created. Um, we've got what we call advanced profile. Um, we've got a pressure and a flow profile. And there's other videos on that, so I won't go too much into it. Um, but basically, this tab here is going to reflect the type of profile. Uh, in this case, it's the advanced profile. Um, so what I want to show you with the advanced profiles is um, each step, uh, this list on the side here, has different ways of finishing. Um, so when this step starts, it can finish by time, um, it can finish by um, a move on state, so we can, we can sit, uh, select this option here to move on if one of these conditions become true. Um, so this, in this since I've got it set to, uh, if the pressure is over one bar, it would move on. Um, I could set it to a uh, pressure that's under. Uh, I could set it to a flow setting by tapping uh, these and, and making an adjustment there. Um, so what the way that the machine works is, um, whichever event comes first, um, it will move on. So if it never reaches um, this move on setting, it will move on when it times out 25 seconds here. Um, and 
we set that for each step. Now, what we can do with DSX is we can move on by weight. Um, in this case here, I've got the step set to move on in the volume. Um, so I'll just cancel out of that and go back to here. We can move on by um, weight at scale. Um, and we can use two options there. We can use um, weight flow or weight mass. Weight mass is the cumulative weight that's in your cup. Um, weight flow is the, the weight rate. So it's like, um, like your water flow rate, but it's the, the, the weight, the scale that is um, detecting. Um, one way to probably describe that is if we go back to the, um, to the graph here, and we get rid of some of this, all this noise on the screen. Um, We've got two curves here. We've got um, grams, and you can see here with this shot, um, this uh, heavier curve shows a weight rate. So this is grams per second. Um, but you can see the weight in the cup accumulates here, goes up, so it keeps increasing. It can't decrease because there's more and more going in, it's not coming out. Um, yet our, our flow rate, um, or our weight rate can decrease, the same as flow. Um, so we have those two options. Um, here we've got um, the mass of flow and we can use either of those to move on. Um, and the way that works is, um, I'll go into that page, so we can tap this uh, area here to go into that page or we can um, use the arrow key to move to the page. Um, so this is the what I call DSX coffee setup page. Um, there's three sections to this page. Uh, there's that weight that I've been describing here, the move on at weight. Um, and we can set these settings here. So um, the important thing here, your profile must have this wording um, within, the pro within that step name. So this is my profile I've got loaded here. I'm going to go back here and load um, this profile. And I'm going to go back here and show you the steps. So, so this profile uh, steps doesn't have that wording in, in the uh, steps. Um, so if I run that profile now, it's going to ignore any settings I have for that move on at weight. Um, if I load a profile, say um, I've got some templates here, so I'm just going to load this profile. If I go to that profile, um, you can see this, this profile's got step names that reflect saturating, uh, pressurizing and extracting. Um, so now if I used to run this profile, um, when it comes to step two here, saturating, um, it's going to um, it's going to look for the, this condition for those conditions. So in this case, I've got um, the flow condition turned off. But it's going to look for 0.4 grams in the cup. Um, if there's 0.4 grams in the cup, it's going to move on to the next step. Um, if one of those other conditions, though, the profile uh, for the step. I haven't got a move on set here, but if I had this set um, or this time um, run out of time, um, it's going to it's going to uh, move on with the first event that occurs. So uh, just something to keep in mind there. Um, so we've only got three options. We can only use three steps, um, but you can duplicate those steps. So what we can do is I can have uh, step one called saturating. I can have step two called saturating uh, for the second time or saturating two or um, could be blooming saturating or, or whatever. So long as it's got the word saturating in there, um, it will use the steps. And the same for pressurizing um, and extracting. Um, but what you need to keep in mind is if you've got two steps with the word saturating in there, it's going to use those settings for both those steps. Um, and that's where a flow um, setting might come in handy. So, so for instance, if I was using a profile curve, um, it's going to look like this graph. Um, and I want to use that um, move on at weight step for where it's increasing pressure here. So I didn't want my flow to go um, over a set flow rate into the cup. Um, when I increase pressure here, I could have that uh, move on at weight during that uh, pressure rise stage, as well as this stage here. And I can use that same study. Um, so, so for instance, I, I wonder, um, 
I want the flow rate, or like an actual flow rate, a weight flow rate of uh, two grams per second. Um, I would set it here, um, and I'll just turn it off. And I would make those two steps um, with the same name. Um, I could either use the same name, or I could uh, just call one saturating um, pressure, um, and the other one saturating hold, or something like that, whatever. Give me your imagination there. But, um, or I can use them separately. So I could use um, saturating for, for my blooming step or my shaking step, saturating as the name suggests. Um, pressurizing, so when it's uh, holding the pressure, um, or building pressure, I name those steps for pressurizing. And extraction, e extracting, um, what I call extracting is um, this part here. So when I refer to a profile, um, I call this fill. So basically getting um, all the water, well, all the airspace above the puck full of water, I call it fill. Um, and then I like to move on a low pressure from fill. Um, and then um, I, this is uh, often referred to as blooming, I call it soaking. Um, um, in, in this case, I call, I'm calling it saturating. Um, so this is the saturating stage, and then this stage here is the extraction stage. Um, so you build up the pressure and you do the extraction. And that's what I've, I've tried to, uh, well, I've labeled these accordingly. So um, I think I've, uh, if there's any questions, let me know. I think I've described it the best I can. Um, we've got two buttons up here you can use. Um, these buttons will work with John's uh, fast tap feature. So um, if I tap that rapidly, it will change uh, whole numbers um, I've got this. If I tap that slow, we'll, we'll do small increments. Tap it fast, it does uh, big increments. Um, I find that a bit hard to use sometimes. Um, I do use it, but uh, probably more so on the app. It works better for me than on, um, on my Mac. Uh, on my Mac, I'm often tapping this button instead. So this will just toggle and do the same thing. So this will hold it at one once. Sorry, 1.0 increments, and then I'll tap it again and change back to 0.1 increments. So you can see there, um, that goes up to 1. Sorry, Damien, I have a question. The flow, is that setting the flow rate, or is that moving on to the next step if that flow rate is hit? No, it's moving on. It's, they move on steps. So how is um, that different so than the flow rate move on that's already in the advanced shots? It works exactly the same. Um, except you're using the scale instead of the um, flow. So if we look at this graph here, um, my flow is, is the same as uh, the weight going in the cup, the flow rate's the same, um, but that might not always be the case, um, whether it's a calibration thing or, or something else. So for instance, here, when I go up to pressure, this is where it can come in very handy. When I go up to pressure, the machine's going to uh, pump as much water in as it can. So I'll just go to that step and show you when we pressure up, um, it's a pressure step. So, and it, because it's a fast transition, it's going to go from the three bar hold that I had for the previous steps up to nine bar as fast as it can. And the way to get there is to pump the water in as quick as it can. Um, if I had a move on step now, um, say a flow over um, two mils per second, it's, it's just going to move on because uh, the machine's going to go pump water faster than that, trying to get to nine bar. Um, with uh, move on by weight, um, that weight, the, the flow coming out isn't going to be fast. Um, it's only the, the water flow going in, which is the difference in the two measures. So now what I can do is, uh, I'll go back to this profile, um, show you on the graph. So what I can do here is if I only want um, a flow coming out, if, say two mils per second, when I increase here or do the uh, pressure rise, um, I can set a setting to two mils per second, which means I'm not going to reach my uh, nine bar goal. It's, the pressure is going to be a lower pressure, but my flow rate is never going to go over two mils per second. So you, you kind of flow profiling using pressure. Um, so then my curve would, um, would curve around here somewhere uh, at lower pressure um, and it would then start declining. Um, with my profile I've got the decline rate basically to get a flat 
flow curve. Um, so if if my uh, I'll just recap on that. If my grime was a little bit coarse, um, when I go to build up pressure here, instead of going up to say three mils per second and, and it turns at nine bar, um, I can turn it um, at a lower pressure and maintain that flow. Um, so that's one difference you wouldn't be able to do without that. Um, right, I understand it. So the word flow really means in cup flow as opposed to flow rate in yeah. into the pocket. Yeah. So that's good. Have you adapted your Slayer profile to use this? Because the big problem with Slayer profile I provide is that it needs to be run twice. Once to see when first drip is, and then you change the timer to then be first drip. So first, the, the profile is set to do like 50 seconds of pre-infusion. <clears throat> but for me, the first drip is around 37 seconds. So I run it once, notice first drip, stop the shot, throw it out, change my timer to 37 seconds, then redo it. And that's because I, my profile doesn't have first drip detection. I'm wondering if you can do that now. Um, not with the existing profiles, unless you change that step name, um, then if you change that second step to uh, call it saturating, I can't remember what I've got in the um, Slayer profile. I think it might be soak or something like that for the name of the the second step, I've probably got it here. Um, anyway, it's, it's not so important. Um, if that second step was called saturating, it could use this feature. So it can detect first drip. So if I turn that off um, and put this down to something small like um, 0.5 grams, um, I find if I go down too small to so 0.1 gram, um, it, it, I, I haven't actually had a trigger, but I'm just concerned about it triggering early um, with some vibration or something. But 0.2 grams um, should be enough. You should get enough inertia to get that actual first drop in the cup and detect uh, that first drop and be able to move on. So with that experiment, if you did, that's the way I would have done it in the past as well. I would have uh, monitored the first drip and then used this. One of the problems is though, that first drip timing can vary. Um, you can change 0.2 grams if you uh, bean dose, um, or you can change your grind slightly. The temperature might be a little bit warmer one day. Um, and that timing of that first drip is going to be, it's going to be out. Um, and this is where this can be advantageous again, is that we can actually um, detect the actual first drip by using the scale and move on from there. Um, and I'm actually using that now. So um, my, most common use profile is uh, LRV2. Um, what I did was with LRV3, it uses LRV2. Um, and just before I go into that, with this profile here, uh, Londinium, um, is the exact copy of what LRV2 is. Um, it's just that when you load DSX, it's going to uh, install this for you. Um, so if you're not using DSX, you can still use that profile, um, using that profile there. Um, so if I go back to um, into here, what I did was I made LRV3 because what I wanted to do was um, try and move on to keep a constant flow. Um, and, and the way I did that was uh, use what we were describing earlier about um, monitoring that flow rate. Um, so if we have a look at LRV3, what I, what I did there was um, move on with a flow rate um, rather than a pressure time. So when I get up to uh, pressure up to the nine bar, um, I stay at nine bar until the flow reaches 1.9 mils per second, and then I start my decline. And my decline is at a, a rate of decline that maintains that, that constant flow. Um, the problem with doing this is, I, I, I can't have that move on uh, on the pressure increase here because what I was saying before, the machine's going to pump water in really quickly to build up that pressure. Um, so I, what happens is when I run this profile now, um, the flow rate's going to be um, constant out. The flow rate's going to level out like it is shown here, um, but it's going to be at different levels all the time depending on 
the pup resistance um, because it's not going to move on until um, that pressure's been raised. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So um, that's where with um, with DSX with, with this move on by weight, um, I can get the same flow rate um, easier by using um, these templates here set up the same profile. So this actually sets up LRB three profile, um, but changes the step with different step names. So it's, it's a, it'll give you the exact same tasting shot as an LRB two or LRB three. Um, but it's going to use these step names and we can use move on first drops here. Um, and with this template, when I load this template, it's setting up these steps here so you can test it out um, without having to know too much about it. You can just click on here and go run that shot. So I'm going to the home page now and do that shot. Um, and you don't have to change anything. And in fact, this is the shot that I'm actually using at the moment. Um, so if I go back into there, um, I started setting up two others as well. Um, there was a profile I put out recently um, to simulate the, um, the lever machine, um, the lever profile, and that profile is copied here, but uses these steps, um, and uses, because it's a, a similar profile in, in the way shape where you put the fill, um, the infusion stage, and then the extraction stage, um, it, it can use the same steps, and I've set up the same, so, but I haven't really played with it too much, so, um, I'm kind of hoping that um, others with, that like that type of copy will uh, come up with settings and then we can, we can uh, fine tune that so that uh, new users can just have that button um, and we'll set it up as the as, uh, best, best way to set that up. And I also created one called Fruity. Um, I started playing a lot with light roast and drinking them as straight espressos, doing long extractions and things like that. I was just trying to experience what other people like. Um, and this is a profile I started using um, to try and get that fruity flavour. So it gives a little bit less body, um, but sort of uh, focuses in um, on those fruity acidic type flavours. Um, so what I did was convert that profile I was using um, to a template as well. And again, this will be developed with time um, to, to get a uh, to set up a template that works um, that works best. So that's basically what these template buttons are. Um, on the right hand side here, we've got um, the, the information about that profile and temperature changes. So this is a new feature as well. We've got global temperature change. Um, Here's the profile I've got loaded. And again, we can tap that name and go to the profile page. So I can load a new profile. This was the other profile I was describing the uh, LM lever. Um, so I load LRB2. You can see the profile name here. And this is the profile steps. So it's listing all the profile steps and the temperature for each one of those steps. So if I go back into the profile, um, you can see I've got 89 degrees C for step one. You can see I've decreased that temperature slightly for half a degrees. Um, and then for the extraction part and the pause part, I'm pouring at 88 degrees C. Um, and if we go back here, you can see those, those steps are reflected here. Um, and what we can do now is we can change all those steps in one go. So um, we're changing it by 0.5 degrees C. If, um, if you've got your machine set for uh, degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to show 0.9 degrees F um, here. So when I tap this side or this side, it's going to go up or down by this increment. Um, and what it's going to do, keep bumping my mouse there, sorry. Um, if I increase that by half a degree C, um, you can see that's gone up to uh, 89.5, we go up another half a degree, it's gone up to 90 degrees C. And you can also see up here that it's changing the um, profile name. Um, you can see it's reflecting that change. And what the idea is there is if I tap this profile name now, I go back to the uh, profile list box here, um, and it's set that name in the save file here. So if I tap that uh, pick to save it, it's just created a new file with that temperature um, as a, a, um, on the end of the profile name. So um, now what I can do is I can load my original, um, and I can pour a shot with that, and I can quickly 
um, laid this with a different temperature and pour another shot and then I can taste them side by side um, and they're going to be similar temperature, hope like cool down at a similar rate. Um, so I can, I can do multiple shots that way um, and you can just delete that if you don't want it, so just snap and delete it. Um, now, you don't have to save the shot as well. So, <clears throat> say for instance, I've loaded um, LRB2 here, uh, and I make a shot, and I taste it, and I go, oh, I wonder what that's going to taste like. Um, there's a little bit of fruity that's coming through. There's no, um, there's no astringency or, or bitterness. Um, so I think that profile could probably, we could try a higher temperature for that. Um, what we can do is we can, we can go straight into that profile um, increase the temperature, so I'll bump it up so three degrees or something like that, and then I can just extract that shot, the shot straight away. It's telling me there that that temperature's been changed, but I can tell that by the profile, and it will uh, do that shot straight away. So I haven't actually saved it, um, it just, it'll be just a one off. So what happens is if I go and select a different profile or made a uh, favourite, um, that if, setting is gone, so it hasn't been saved. Um, and of course, I could go in there, um, change that, and I could save that then as a uh, favour by tapping one of these cups, and then load that setting um, into a favour. So for instance, I save it to the pink cup here. Um, you can see I've laid that profile. If I um, load one of the other profiles, come back here, it's loaded that with the temperature setting. Um, so I think that's, some people will find that pretty handy. People have been asking for a global temperature change for a while. So I think that might be a feature that some people would like to use. Okay, so I think we've got everything covered. I think now uh, we went through pretty quickly through a lot of that. So if anyone's got questions or want, wants to um, recap on any of those steps, uh, let me know. Uh, one question you, for you is, are you using the same scale for everything and is this all kind of um, integrated into your scale adapter? Yes, so let me just um, uh, Just change over to this other camera over here um, I've got Okay, so that's, um, this is my tablet. So you can see the tablet running there. And you can see here, I've got a, um, a scale on the grip tray. Um, so when, um, when you get your machine, you're gonna have a machine that looks like this. Um, and you're gonna have a, a tray on it that looks similar to that. Um, and basically what I've done, is um, taking the tray off. There's on a uh, 3D printed um, drip tray. Um, and that drip tray is mounted to uh, the scale. And I've got, got, um, it comes in three parts here, we've got print, 3D print. So we've got um, this part here, which we glue to the top. And we've got this part here, which is what I call the caddy, which um, basically holds that scale in place. So when I push that in now, um, it goes, right back to the machine here, but you can't actually touch the machine um, and you can't move sideways, so it, it can't mess up, you can't get it wrong. Um, without that caddy, you could, if, if the scale happens to touch the machine, you get vibration and you get um, noise in, in your um, scale reading. Um, so that's, that's the idea of the caddy. Um, there's other scale adapter stands, um, you can get, you can find them on the story, you can get metal ones now and, and so forth. But, um, that's the way it works and with time um, there's new scales coming online that you can use so um, this is called scale spelled with a K, S K A L E. is the, um, it's, it's the uh, brand or make of this scale or whatever it is. Um, uh, when, when the dressing scale comes out we'll be able to do the same thing, we'll have to design a new drip tray for it. Um, and the way it works is this scale Bluetooth to the tablet. Um, so if you go into settings, um, go into the app part here, and you can see you've got a scale connected here. So if you've got a, blue, a scale connected to the 
to um, tablet. When I tap this scale here, you can see the reading. Um, you see the reading change, and that's what we're using um, with DSX. We're, we're taking that reading there, um, and we're using that to um, to set our beam weight. Um, we're using it for stop at weight, which is which will work with any skin. Um, that's a profile setting. Um, and we're using it to, for these move on by weight settings that we was describing a short time ago. Um, so just to go back into the, I'll just show you on um, here, if we go into um, the profile, um, you can see here it's got a printed message, do not uh, edit this page. That's just because I'm using the profile called DSX Copy Mocker, which is one of the templates. Um, and Basically, just put the message there so you don't go save that or make changes. So that if you tap that button, you don't lose your changes. So it's just probably basically, if you want to save it, save it with a new name that you call um, whatever you want. Um, in the profile, um, in the advanced profiles, you've got uh, a tab down the bottom here called uh, limits. And in the limits, we've got uh, other move on, uh, not move on, we've got other. Uh, stop settings and options as well. We can stop by uh, water volume. So when the machine thinks it's pumped a certain amount of volume, um, we can stop. And we can also um, tell us um, when we want to start counting that volume. So we might want to start at, say, step two of our profile or step one. Um, um, so we can, we can change that, start tracking um, by different steps there. Um, and the other option, so we can turn it off or, or set it. Um, the other one is stop, stop by weight. Um, you know, you can see here I've got stop by weight for this profile set to 54 grams. Um, and if I change that there, it's, it's going to reflect on the screen um, 54 grams there. Um, but what DSX can do, you can, you can also edit it by going in the profile. You can go straight to this page and just change it here as well. Um, this isn't going to change the profile, so if I go back and load that profile, it's going to set it back. This is just a on the fly change, um, or if I want to change it because I want to save it to favourites, it won't affect the original profile. And that's something else I want to point out here too. When you save a, a profile, say I, I go select that profile, um, and I want to save it to a favourite, so the gentleman select profile, I'm going to save that. Um, is one of my favourites. I'm going to say to the blue cup, I tap the blue cup, um, and you can see when I load that, it loads. If I go change um, that profile now, um, so I change those, that stop away for that profile, put it up to 74 grams, for instance. Um, I, you can see an asterisk up here, which indicates that, that profile's going to change, but it hasn't been saved to the, the file, to the profile itself. Um, I go OK. That's, the name's gone red, in the case that it's, um, it's done a change. Um, and you can see here, this, the shot weight's going to be 74 grams. Um, I can save that to um, my favourite. So I've, I've made that shot, and it was really good. I'll just go like that, save it to the blue cut. Um, then if I go and load that general suite again, that profile, um, it's going to set that weight back to 36, whatever it was. Um, setting the profile, but if I tap my cup here, it's now gives um, the settings we'll save as favourite. So when you say the favourite, it's not going to change the original profile. So even though that profile is the same name, um, you need to be aware that um, if it's in the colour of the cup here, it's, uh, it's not the profile that's saved in file, it's the favourites we've got loaded there. Um, and um, for milk weighing and bean weighing, like bean weighing, you're putting your niche cup on that drip tray, and there's enough space there to, to weigh and, and pour your beans in? Yeah, so I just sit the um, cup on there. Um, so I'm going to tear that, just close that cupboard. So I think, can you guys see that all right? I think so. Yeah, just fine. Um, yeah, so I put, I put it up on there. So I tear, um, I grab my copy, and we'll just put it in. So I want 18 grams, um, and I just get the 18 grams. So you can see on the scale it says 18 grams. Um, I tap 
Um, we can see that it's just kind of down the scale drifting a bit. Um, we can see it's 18.1 grams saved there. So if I tap that, it's, it's updated that now. Um, actually, I should go into the history and show you what that's about too. I forgot about that. Um, and that's where we're keeping that information as well. But, um, so I've weighed out those beans. I would now go tip that into my mesh grinder um, and, and grind those beans and start preparing my milk, uh, getting that ready to uh, do the same thing. So I can actually show you that. Um, right, so I'll just try to do that. So I'm still looking at my milk jug, but I'm not, I don't get uh, no vacuum. I just look to where I want to fill that. So I reckon there's somewhere around 200 mils in here now. Um, and I can check that. So I'm, scared. I'm going to uh, tear the scale, so it's gone to zero. I set that on my tray. And I've actually got 222 grams in that cup. So that you can see here you've got the uh, gross weight. And it's taken the weight that I put in the settings of that um, medium-sized jug. Um, and just give us a net right there of 22 grams. Now, if I tap here, it's going to set my steam time to 42 seconds. Um, and that, when I steam that milk, it's going to uh, come out at, um, at 64 degrees C. Um, so I've weighed out my beans and I've done my milk, so we're ready to go. Um, so my, my beans would have been ground while I was doing that. Now, um, if I wanted to check say I've ground that, done my grinds in the cup here, um, and I wanted to check the weight that was in the cup, um, that's where this can come in here. So I can tear that first, I can sit that on there, and it's going to recognise that that's a niche cup um, by the tear weight we've put in there, and it's going to tell us we've got 18.1 grams in that cup. Um, so you, you can um, check the grinder, the retention of your grinder for each shot as well. That's another option there. Or um, because I've gone and um, Tear my scale after I put my beans in there. I can now put it on here and, uh, and I, I might have forgot to set my weight there. So I can tap that bean and set my base weight. I can see it afterwards. So, um, that's the way the scale works here. Yeah. Any more so questions? That, that lets you um, deal with any retention in the grinder. So you weighed the beans, but maybe you lost a half gram and, and you can come back and adjust it that way. Yeah, well, I, could, I can adjust it, I can grind more or whatever. So if you don't want tension, I, um, I don't really get much retention with the niche. Um, it does keep some in there, obviously, but um, now if I get 0.1 gram of tension, that's probably about max what I use it for. So are you automatically detecting that someone's putting a milk jug versus a niche cup on there and then tearing appropriately? Um, Yes and no. Um, I am with the dish um, jug, so you can see here that, um, can you see that? See, just above my finger, it's got 18.1 grams. Um, so it is detecting that's a dish um, cup. If, if I say, for instance, put my milk jug on there, um, it's just going to show on. So if I tap that bean now, it's not going to save that weight because it, it says that weight's not within a certain range. Um, and then, it's, so it's not going to say, it's going to think it's something else. Um, but you can see that um, the weight above the, uh, the steam side is detected. So it's got 221 grams. If I take that away, that disappears. Um, if I use a different cup. I'm not sure, I've got a couple small cups, so I'm not sure whether I've got this one set up. So I'll just go through it quickly and set the weight up for that one. Um, so the way I'll do that is go into, um, into this Steam setup page. Um, I've got uh, 159 grams for the small cup here. Uh, so I can tap the scale here to tear it. If there's a weight on it, I, I would tear it. Um, and then I, I stick that jab on there. And it's 158.3. So if I tap that, it's updated that to 158 uh, grams. So it rounds off the whole numbers. Um, so now, if I put, if I was to pour that milk in to a small jug, I'm going to lose a little bit because of the milk sitting on the side. And I put it on 
on the scale. Um, it's it's uh, selected the small jug because I've just made a change to it. But if that was on the uh, medium jug, um, it's going to give me the incorrect weight here. So it doesn't automatically detect. You need to be aware that the uh, yes is for small, medium, large, or, or no which jug you're using. Um, but you can see here, I've still I've got 221 grams. So um, if I was on large, you'd give me the wrong reading. So I think, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a really nice feature. Um, I accidentally interrupted somebody else who was asking a question. So please go ahead. Oh, I think I was asking whether you'd gone over the history function. Okay, I'll, I'll do that now. Um, I have to go. Okay, so um, I might go back to go back to the app here. Um, so this icon here is the history icon that takes you to the history pages. Um, just give me a little bit of feedback here. Let me turn this down. Okay, so um, on the history page, um, we've got two graphs. Um, and uh, on the left hand side, you guys should have a puzzle. Sorry, just bear with me for a second. Just um, okay. So on the left hand side here, we've got the um, menu here, so you can scroll that like any other scroll menu, and you can select the uh, history files. Now, history files are saved in um, in numerical order, um, which is a file name that's created by uh, a timestamp, um, and that's what you're seeing here. So basically, you're seeing um, 2020, 11th month, 06 is the day, and then you've got T per time, um, and then you've got a, a time which you're not going to be able to decipher. Um, but they will be in order from when, when you make those shots. And what I've done is um, put this list in order of uh, newest at the top. Um, so if you use your file explorer and look at those files, they're going to be in likely the reverse order, depending on how you've got your settings set. But, um, if we click the last shot, um, it was made here. So this is my wife's coffee this morning and something's gone horribly wrong here. Um, so I might, I'll just delete that one. Um, so this is the shot from, uh, from her shot yesterday morning. Um, now this time, Stamp here is converted up here to the date time up here, so you can refer to uh, well, you can see here exactly when that shot was made. So that was made uh, Thursday morning on the 5th of November at um, four minutes to six in the morning. Um, this is the profile that was used, so I've got here the DSX uh, copy mocker. Um, so this profile is um, moved on by uh, weight here, so it's moved on when it's detected. Uh, 0.5 grams in the cup or whatever setting it was. Um, and then it's moved on the pressure step here. It's moved on as well to maintain uh, the constant flow. Um, on this side, you've got the exact same thing. Um, that, actually, i go back here, I missed this part. Down the bottom here, you've got information about that shot. So you've got, uh, this is your extraction ratio. So you've got your beam weight and you've got your um, weight, your final weight. Uh, of the shot, so that where it stopped at weight, but this is the actual weight that we measured. So, in this case, it was a, a one to three shot. Um, it was 18 grams in, 50, 54 grams out, so 53.8. Um, with this profile, I started um, at step two, monitoring the water, um, where I was showing you in the advanced profile in the limits tab, where you could um, set what step you wanted. Um, to start that volume, even though I had that volume set to off, um, I had the step set to step two. So that starts recording that water um, that was used from 
um, the end of step two, which is the starts building up pressure here. So basically, it's showing me that I, I use um, the machine thinks it used 83 gram, uh, 83 mils of water, and I got 83 point grams out, which means it's uh, pretty spot on. Uh, sorry, no, it's not. I just made a fool of myself, but anyway, it says I've got 83 grams out, so I've started that from, from the start, so it's including all this water here. But anyway, you could step that, set that to step two and check how close you're getting to um, the stop of weight. And the advantage of doing that is, um, say for instance, I've got a, a band and I might um, go away for the weekend, take my machine with me, um, and I don't want to take the scale with me. Um, so I can check in my history here to see how much water those shots were taking. And you can see here, I'm going back through these same profiles, same extraction ratio, and the volume used is the same, it's 83 grams. Um, it might change slightly, so it went up five grams and I'll explain why that is in a minute. Um, so what I can do now is go back to that profile list, to the limits here, and I can set that to uh, 83 grams and I've started immediately. Um, so if I, I'm just tapping here to go one step in, so I set that 83 grams, uh, 83 mils, sorry. And it's going to stop um, and give me the same extraction ratio, it's going to stop at the same. Um, it may not quite be as accurate, um, but it's going to be pretty close. Um, and it's pretty consistent. So, um, so that's, that's the advantage of recording this information on having a look back through your history and, and seeing that information there. Um, so the same information is on the right hand side here and what I've done is um, enabled you to load two, two different profiles, so uh, two different history shots. So you've got um, this one here and if I want to check the, the day before, um, you can see here by the dates, this is Wednesday, Thursday. Um, and these are my wife's shots because um, I can tell by the time. Um, she's used the same profile and I might want to compare them. So I can say, okay, well, I've got to stop exactly the same weight. Um, this one's got a little bit more water in the cup. And the reason for that is, uh, if you look closely, where the drops are coming in the cup, it's a little bit later. Um, and the reason being is, um, when this shot started, um, the line coming up to the group head was um, dry. Um, so it had been sitting for some time or there was no water pump up or for whatever reason. And uh, it takes um, pretty well every time, it takes exactly five mil um, at the start of the profile to, for water to fill that line up and get to the group head. Um, so, so often I'll find I've got exactly five minute difference between two profiles. Um, and that, and that's, that's the reason for that. Um, so I can compare those and go, okay, well, you know, things are looking pretty good. You can see um, there's a bit of difference here in the, in the total length of time and stuff, and that's because um, the grinder setting was changed. The bean's got a, a little bit age about them, or we might have used a different bean or something, and we've changed the grinder setting, so it's, it's given us a different curve. Um, but the point is you can see them side by side and compare and, and look for differences. Um, what we can do with this right hand side is we can actually view our, um, uh, we can, our God shots. Um, so those that aren't familiar with what God shots are, um, John has created um, this page here, or these pages here which are God shots. And basically with your last shot or the current shot you've got displaying, um, you can save that here as a guide shot and you'll save a graph. And then what happens is that graph on your homepage here, um, that graph will overlay um, and the idea is to try and do your shot to you trace that shot. Um, it's, a, it's a feature that I don't use, but what I've done, um, so I'm probably not describing um, describing it the best, but what I've done is you can tap this button here and you can it'll bring up the list of God shots you might have. So now you can compare, um, if you've saved the God shot, you can load that God shot here and you can compare um, any one of your history shots to that God shot. Um, 
So I, I'm just using the history so I've made the history. What I can do though is um, overlay in a similar way to what the guide shot does on the home page graph um, by using this button. Um, if I tap this button here, it'll um, overlay those two um, history files for those two those two graphs. So it's overlaying this and this um, with the left one as the solid and the, um, the broken line as the right. Um, so if I was to lay the same profile, you can see they're going to mirror each other exactly. But, um, so that's what this is. I don't actually use it, but that's what's there. Um, you can decide you want to use it. Um, these buttons here, we've got, uh, we can turn the temperature off and on on the graph. So um, you can see I'm toggling that and it's just putting that temperature graph, uh, temperature curve off. So it's not on any large graph either. So to enlarge those graphs, um, just tap in the graph and it will um, give a full screen view. Um, so that's just toggling the temperature curve off. Um, I can toggle um, the goal curve on and off as well. So you can see the dotted line on these graphs of the, um, the profile goal curve. So you can toggle that on and off. Um, and the resistance curve. So I think that Resistance curve. I, I haven't been using the resistance curve, but I think I've got a uh, different algorithm there. You can see there's a different curve. Um, so I'm using a different algorithm. I can't remember which one I've got there. Um, that's why it looks a bit different. So I might fix that up and make it the same. But it hasn't already. Um, so because I've use, I've got to I turn it off. Um, so that's what those buttons do. This button here is a remove button. So you notice before when I um, made a shot, so if I was to run uh, a simulated shot here on the sim, you can see that the curve's just, uh, it's just rubbish basically. It's just uh, random numbers, random information. Um, and if I stop that, it's gonna save it to my history file here on my Mac, uh, which is this file here now. Um, and because I don't want those files, um, I've just put a, uh, a remove button here. Um, so if I select um, that file and then I tap this button, um, you can see it disappeared from here, although it's still loaded in memory. So um, if I move that file, so if I tap this top on now, it loads um, the profiles from history. Um, the other advantage of doing that is um, when this list gets very long, it can cause the, cap, uh, the app to become laggy. Um, it can also be hard to scroll. Um, Barney's made a new algorithm for the scroll bar and it works quite well now, but um, in the past, sometimes the scroll bar might not have been long enough or, or for whatever reason, um, you might want to shorten that list up. And you can do that by um, selecting the profile and moving it to um, um, tapping the remove button. Now, it doesn't actually lose the profile. So if I bring up um, a file explorer again, what it's doing is um, uh, it's putting it into a, a history archive. So DSX will cre create a folder here called history archive. Um, and all those history files um, that I use that delete button for will go will transfer from the history folder across the history archive folder. So, um, that way you might actually delete them and lose them and you've got them there if you want to look at them next year or whenever. Um, but because that history archive file doesn't load with the app, it, um, it can be as long as you like and it won't slow anything down. So that's, that's what that feature is about. Hey Damien, I think it makes sense for that history archive feature to be based by date and to be something I put into the app. So you can have, for example, a rolling 30 days of archive I like the way you've done it to move it so we don't delete it. I don't know what you think of that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. The way I, I'm probably not using it that much. I'm using it more to delete files than I'm using that I want, but um, I'm, I'm using the File Explorer. Um, and because I've got it connected, uh, synced up to, um, so I'm using a Samsung tablet for my copy machine. And if I tap, if I look at that folder there, um, my history files are going to be synced with my tablet. So as soon as I make a shot on my tablet, it's going to show up here straight away. Um, 
So what I'm doing here is I'm basically just grabbing these files and, and dumping them, but I'm saving them on my computer um, just in case something happens. I sometimes change tablets and things like that or um, say that Android crashed um, and I lost that folder. Um, I've got a backup of all my shots on my computer. So that's an alternative way. If you want to do it in app, I think that button is a good way. And if, um, um, John could put that into the app sort of things. It might be another way of sorting it. Uh, there's one feature that came to mind that I thought might be useful here, which is you generally don't want to compare history shots that are made with different profiles, right? So if one is default and one is LRV2, it's not really useful to compare the curves. Um, so what I was thinking, looking at this, is if you tapped on the left, you know that it's DSX copy machine. Uh, you know what the profile is, or Mocha, or whatever. Um, on the right-hand side, I would filter out all the history items that are not that same recipe, not that same profile, because you don't want to know about them. I don't know yeah. if that seems rational or not. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I hadn't thought of that. Um, I probably don't compare that many side by side, I guess. So this, I haven't done that, but that would be a good option. You could have a button to just um, filter the list. Yeah, just, just magically only show me on the right hand side history items that are made with the same profile because I, I don't want to mm -hmm. compare different. Uh, history profile, uh, different shots, exactly. That doesn't make a lot of sense comparing those two. Yeah, the only problem is um, two shots you might want to compare it with temperature, which I haven't done yet, but I'm just thinking, yeah, um, where I, I'm just trying to find one, where I name the profile name. Um, so where it puts a different profile name uh, for a different temperature um, and you're using the same profile, I'm wondering whether this shot resistance to the puck changes with hotter water, whether uh, hotter water passes through quicker or not, so you get a shorter shot time. Um, it's just something I'm thinking there. That it might be something you want. you want to toggle, that, that you know, <laughs> filter checkbox, so you, you, you filter the history automatically, or you don't want to. Um, yeah. I, you're right, you can see both use cases, but I think most of the time you only want to compare shots that were made with the same profile. Yeah, yeah, so that's a good idea. Suggestion. Um, the other possibility, I don't know if you want to do it, if you want to have a parent, because like this one that you've got right here, when you save it, if you change the name, we could have the original name and have like a parent <clears throat> name, and we don't ever change it. So when you, if you load up Damien LRV2 and then you give it a new name, we would just always save the parent name. And that would allow you to, to have multiple profiles with different variations, but still know that they're, they're related. Yeah, I'm not sure whether that starts getting confusing because, say for instance, if no, I was developing... Internally, I mean, you would just do that. I'm not sure you would even expose it to the user. Uh, oh, okay. I'm, I'm with what you're saying there. I think it does, doesn't it? Um, um, I mean, the idea is, is, is when you say save as, you would basically save original name inside the profile. Don't show it to the user, but that would allow you when you're looking at LRV2 and LRV2 nine degrees, you would know those were the same actual ones. The other yeah. thing that you could do if you want to be really lazy is not have the profiles match, but just does the history item contain the name on the left? Because on the right, you've just appended to it. So your filter could just look for LRV2 and is that substring in the profile yeah. on the right? If it is, they're close enough, compare them. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I, I could see that getting very complicated because, for instance, I change my profile name with the bean name appended so I can keep track of what, what the beans are that I'm using. And so you get an enormous number of variations in profiles and temperatures. That's right. That's what I was getting at too. But what John is saying is that um, I create a variable. So when you load a uh, Profile, say for instance, um, you can see here I've changed that profile name to reflect the temperature. So you would, you're changing your profile name to reflect the bean type you're using. Um, what's important here is that the original profile name is um, the prefix of the name here. Um, and what John is saying is if you load, say, the original profile here um, and then you go and make changes, um, we recognize 
that original name, but save it uh, to the file. It's not something you'll see on the user interface. It's just something we save to the file so that when we go to history, we can sort by um, any file that's, um, that might have a different name that originated from, the, from that uh, profile. Does that make sense? It, it, it does, as long as when you change the screen name, you, don't, you can't change the root name. Because sometimes I might want to, the names get so long that I'll like truncate Damien's LRV2, just LRV2. That's right. But the way we can do that is when we go to the profile list here, um, say you want to experiment with, a, with one, of the, um, one of the profiles somebody's created or one of the default profiles. Say, for instance, we want to um, just use the default, for instance. Um, you would go into here and you would make your changes, um, whatever changes you want to make. And then you would go back here and you wouldn't say default, you would give it um, some unique name. So you might call it um, Harry's profile or something. Right? But what we're going to do is recognize that you loaded the default to start with. Okay, so now you can get rid of that default name altogether, call it something else, call it Harry's profile here. Um, but when we go to the history, um, it's going to recognize that originated from the default profile. So now you can use a filtering to say, okay, let's load all profiles that originated from default. So yes, yes, that's exactly what I meant in terms of changing the screen name doesn't change the underlying foundation. That's right. That's right. So you would still see your name here that uh, indicates the whatever, uh, yeah. Yeah, whatever name you've used to indicate what changes you've made, et cetera. So, yeah, I can, a bit of work, but I can see I can see how that could be helpful. Hi, Damien. This is me, Majid. Uh, I would like like to to wet my coffee beans on on the niche cup. Yeah. Uh, and after that, grind it directly to the butter filter. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. after that, wait wait it with the butter filter to see how how many like the grinded coffee. Is it possible, like, to add uh, a feature that to wait the, to to recognize the cob and the butter filter weight? Yes. So you can do that now. Uh, not what I'd have to do is that an extra um, an extra uh, net weight for your reporter filler here um, to be able to do both. But you can do it now. Um, by weighing your cup first and then tearing the scale um, yeah. and then put your beans in, weighing out your 18 grams, tipping that into your um, grinder and grinding them. But for this setting here, weigh your portafilla for this setting here. So then when you put your portafilla on, the, um, on, the, on the scale, cool. it's going to give yeah. you the, the net weight up here. Does that make sense? Yeah, can we use like both, like to recognize both, like the cup, similar to the jug, like the medium and the large jug? Yes, yeah, so that's something I can implement, yes. Um, but at the moment, no, it's, it's not available yet. Okay, thank you very much for your time and effort. No worries, thank you. So, one of the things, I've got uh, two niche machines and... Um, uh, I'll just go into that. So with my two niche machines, I've got two cups. And you can see here, this cup's got all this uh, black insulation tape on it. <laughs> the two cups come with different weight. So what I did was pull all this tape around so the two cups weigh exactly the same. So that request you just asked for would um, benefit me there as well, because I could set two cups. But the only problem is for me, the cups look the same. So I wouldn't know which cup, if I mixed them up, I wouldn't know which cup was what. So um, I have them both the same weight. So that way I can use either one. Um, Here we go. <laughs> yeah. But you could, you could use this. And then, um, so I'm going to there. And I'll just hit, I'll just tap here. And that's the weight of my, um, my portafilla with the basket now. So if I grind into that, 
um, and I tear this here, and I've got the grinds in there now. If I stick that on there, um, where it's got 1.3 grams, um, it's, it's gonna, that's going to be the weight uh, of my uh, puck, my grinds in there. Point four. Just be aware that if I stick that off centre, it will change the weight slightly. So you can see that's 0.6 grams. Um, if I was to weigh rather than extremes, you can see that it's, uh, it's got some leverage effect. Um, it's, it's not so bad if you're weighing the same spot, it's going to be consistent all the time. You can see it back to 1.2. But I just noticed that then because um, when I set that up, I probably had the handle hanging off the end, giving some weight leverage off the end. Um, and you can see that weight's gone up. So if you want to be critical about your actual weight and weighting, um, it would be important to have the handle centered to be consistent every time. Okay, any, anyone else got some questions or suggestions, ideas? Oh, I had one other question. Um, with the temperature offset, which is fabulous, um, is there any way to have it um, keep track of the total temperature offset since the previous save? So say you, you wanted to do a, a two degree offset and you couldn't remember where you started. Is there a way that it would tell you that it's two degrees different from the, the save setting? Um. Only the original profile doesn't have the temperature name in there, but if I was to, I keep using LRV2 because I'm familiar with it, but um, you can see here this last shot was uh, LRV2 and it's got 90.5 degrees. It's only that if I tap on here, um, I can see what temperature it's set to. So it's at 89 degrees C. Um, and you can see this is at 90.5, so I can tell the temperature difference there. Um, other than knowing what that original temperature is, it's, it's not displayed, no. Um, I don't really want to name original profiles with temperature settings. Um, to me, so I, I, wasn't, I was thinking maybe in the page where you do the offset. In here. Yeah, if when you click the the arrows, there was just a counter on the side that kept track of plus or minus the total increment that it's changing. Yeah, well, I could do that here. I could make a different color um, uh, value here. The, the it just said plus temperature or minus temperature, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good suggestion. So I'll do that. Um, I just gotta, yeah. Sorry, I'm just thinking in my head. How good a program <laughs> you don't need to know that. <laughs> I, I can hear the gears. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking because is it going to look at um, this profile name and the difference in temperature there, or is it going to so, say, for instance, I load um, um, LRV2 here, and I, or I load this one with um, a temperature difference already saved. Um, I, I would take it off the temperature that's set on the first on the fill step. On the, on the original. Yeah, on yeah. whatever you loaded before you, you know, that was saved. Yeah, well, I can see, I can see somebody's gonna be confused with that because they're gonna uh, create the, their own profile with a new temperature. And even if they load this file now and then rename that to something else, um, if it recognizes the original profile and lays the temperature, it's not gonna be the temperature they saved, which is gonna oh. cause a confusion. Actually, it's not that you would need to show the temperature itself, but rather when you open a new profile, it resets that value to zero. So that when you do your increment, you increment off zero. So it would just show plus 0.5, 1, 1.5. And then if you opened a new profile, right. it would go okay. back to zero. So what you're saying is when I open this page, yeah. Um, so for instance, I go back to this page, I open this page, then it'll go to zero and it, all it's doing is recording how many times I've tapped this button. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a very simple idea. Um, so what I could do is I could, I could use this figure here 
Um, I know some, this has confused a few people, so I might put some text somewhere that says, um, the, like maybe here, increments 0.5, because if, if I change this to uh, degrees Fahrenheit, um, it'll give a different value here. So um, I just wanted people to know what increments it's going to change by tapping the button. So if I yep. take that out of there, and when we tap this, it indicates... Oh, the total yeah, offset. Yeah. Yeah, that would be, that'd be very clear. Yeah. Yep. So just while I remember, um, you can see here I've got this profile that was saved uh, in degrees Fahrenheit. Um, if you've got your, your app set to degrees Fahrenheit, so if you go into um, your app settings miscellaneous and you've got this option here selected, um, on um, on this page here, all this is, all these uh, degrees C is going to show us degrees F. Um, and when you save that file, so if, if we go into here, we save this name. It's going to save it with this name. Now, if you change the machine back to Celsius later, um, it's not going to rename your profiles that you've saved. So just something to be aware of there. Um, it's only it's not going to change the settings. The profile settings will still be the same because even if you're in degrees Fahrenheit, your profile is actually saved. Uh, degree Celsius, it's just the file name that's going to um, be locked in whatever you say to it. Okay, I think uh, if there are any more questions, I'm big show of thanks for Damien for not only doing this, but spending two hours out of your morning to explain it all to us. So thanks again. Um, and I'm going to put this on YouTube shortly. Right, thanks, guys. Cheers.